Okay, well, it's uh, later in the week, and we had a hole on one of our fields that we could not plant at the time with 24 row because it was too wet. And now it's like a week and a half later, and the hole is ready to go. And but we've already started converting the planter over to organic, and we really don't want to, you know, have to go through that process again. So, got two and a half acres ish. I got to plant four row today. Wiffles, only the best. I'm just using some leftover corn, so we do have a little bit of leftover Pioneer that we used in one of our trials. Got my graphite. Got a couple bags of Wiffles plot seed we're just gonna throw in there. It's just kind of whatever's left over, you, you throw in the 4-0. I basically got this low area right here. Uh, this is one of those areas that if there's a chance of rain, there's probably water sitting in it. It doesn't even need to rain. Obviously that's a joke, but it gets very wet. But it's actually dry right now. So I gotta do 120 foot of end rows on this side and that side, and then fill it in with a four row. I plan to make it look good, but we'll see. First things first, I need to up the population a little bit. I'm currently planting a 28, which is a little bit light. So I just gotta switch some gears around here. I gotta figure out which one it is. And then I'll start planting. So I haven't actually checked how this planter has planted in like the last four years, because I just go out there and plant and it's a 7,000, so it does a beautiful job anyways. But I, I should maybe actually dig one to see how my depth is. It is extremely sticky underneath yet, but that's okay. Anyways, there's my little corn plant right there. And I need two hands to do this, but if I do my little shovel test, I am right about at two inches. So that is, that's good for what I'm doing, especially for the fact that this corn, there's a, if it rains, it's not gonna be here anyways. This spot will, but that won't. I remember the days, all those years ago that never fade away. ground I can recall the time and place on the midnight walk through the old streets trying to turn back the clock to the days of old back to the days when all the things we knew were made of gold as the world moves on time sings a song as it stood like a quiet dream the shadows of that time are cast beneath the street light beam as the world moves on time sings a song don't cry don't Wow, it got dark fast. I I left here and completely forgot to film, so I'm on my way home by a side stop by. Look at how good this looks, even with a four-row planter. That, that's a little wide. But it looks pretty dang good. Uh, there ended up being three and a half acres, according to my computer track monitor that I planted here. Because I planted from here all the way to about 60 foot away from the headlands, and I did 120 foot of headlands here. So, quite a bit of planting for the old girl. But it handled it great, and uh, I think it's gonna look really good. I'm always amazed. I dug up a little bit of seed after I um, got done filming, and 
the spacing on that 7,000 at three and a half miles per hour is better than the exact emerge. I mean, I, I was planting about 34, eight uh, for population and each seed was like exactly six inches apart, which I, I, it boggles my mind that they have perfect spacing in the seventies. It's just, yeah, it's crazy. Well, it's been about a week, week and a half, this last video you guys saw, and I have a little more replanting to do, but I gotta drive it away. He's trying to figure out if it'll fit in this trailer or not. <laughs> I don't know. We're gonna try it. Ah. Well, if we get the branch to fit between the rows, uh, okay. this might actually work. Let's see if we can get this. Got it. A little snug. The ramps fit in between the row units. Barely fit. I know 100% they're going to start rubbing on my planter, but I don't know what to do about that. These felling trailers, beautiful trailer, but they only put three spots for you to tie something down. One, two, three. And now that I look at it, this one actually fell off. Dude, these are the stupidest. How felling makes these trailers with nowhere to tie anything down boggles my mind other than that they're a beautiful trailer but one two three what if you have something right here okay i made it a little sketchy and like i thought the ramp did rub some paint off my poor planter right there find something thrown between there and touch that up later but this is the field where we did our test plot this year we did not film the test plot it was, there was enough going on we didn't need any cameras there too but we got like 32 different varieties in this field and there was one spot where after we changed the uh the variety we forgot to hook a couple vacuum hoses back up and so there's a little bit of the plot that's like not planted correctly. So I'm just gonna go and fill it in with the four row. It's not gonna be perfect, but it's gonna be better than it was. So here we are. There was one, two, three rows for a hundred feet that were not planted because the vacuum hose was unhooked. So I'm just gonna come in, plant these three rows. I actually do have the variety in my in a bag in the planter. It was a Wiffles variety. I'm so sorry, Wiffles, that's my bad. I forgot to put the vacuum hose back on. So last year we had a trial as well, a corn trial. It had like 36 different varieties on it. And that one was right across the road uh, on the farm, straight to the south of this one. And Wiffles absolutely kicked butt. I think they had like the top five numbers or something like that. I mean, it wasn't even close. But this year we're doing 32, we're on this side. And it was actually a Wiffles number that I screwed up on here. So I'm, I'm so sorry, Wiffles. Um, they're great sponsors of the channel and I let them down. But it's only one, two, three rows for like a hundred feet. I got the actual variety in my planter and I'm just gonna fill this spot in just so there's not, you know, a fourth of the, of the pass missing for a hundred feet because that could throw some results. So. Is this going to be as good as, as if I planned it right away? Obviously not, but it will at least provide some yield so that way it doesn't throw it off quite as much. Well, here's the bag of the little pot corn, little pot corn bag that I got to put in three of these units. So I'm going to empty three of these units, put it into one, which will actually be good because I got to go plant one row. Um, the first day I was planting when I was live streaming, there was one row that didn't get planted for about three quarter of the way around the field on the headlands. So well, I'll just empty all the other units into that box and I'll use that box to plant that one row around the edge of that field.
exactly a speed demon by any means. Before I had my driver's license, I drove this thing everywhere. I would drive it 15 miles to go plant the field. Now I have a tra driver's license, I'll pick up in a trailer. It works a lot better. Well, it was supposed to have started rain. <laughs> well, it was supposed to have started raining about an hour ago, and I think the skies are actually getting a little bit clearer, so that's good. Maybe we can actually get the organic planted here like tomorrow. That'd be awesome. Well, I found where that uh, that seed tube broke when I was live streaming. Say about right there, where, where the where the corn stops. But I must have stopped and lifted up for something right here because there's a, a 10 foot gap between there and there. Luckily I have a 10 foot planter. So when there's like a 10 foot gap like this, that's 24 rows, I usually just drive straight across it this way because we're not really trying to gain yield here, we're just trying to reduce the weeds. So put the corn going in this way, you'll combine about 50% of it when the combine goes through just is what it is otherwise I'd sit here I would wreck more corn turning around six times than I would gain back from planting so this riding thing was pretty cool is you had individual section control back in 1974 or whatever year it was too it just happens to be manual yeah it only took 20 seconds to turn three rows off Okay, so I finished the one row and I turned uh, all my rows off on my monitor except for one. So it was only recording row four. And I went from three and a half acres of total field area to 4.9. That's how long that one row was turned off for. What's amazing is, is that the monitor on the big planter when the row wasn't planting, it wasn't beeping at me like, like I thought it would. It, it was just quiet. And now on this particular field, I got a few spots where I lifted up for rocks and then they came and got the rocks. So I'm just trying to find them here on Op Center. And then there's one right in front of me. Go plant four rows crossways across it. Just fill it in, keep the weeds from growing. Got three or four of those here. And then I'll see if there's any other spots to plant. And uh, here we got a rock, the rock picker mixed, mixed, missed. Will that fit my rock box or will I have to bring the rock picker out? It's not as big as I thought it would be. When you lift, you want to make sure you do it in like a, with your back and in a twisting and jerking motion. That, that's preferred. That works. If high school self could see, could see this right now, he'd be pretty proud. I made this rock box in my high school welding class. Okay. 
got it. Well, I was just about to put it away for the night and look over. We had some spots that kind of washed out here. So I'm just gonna hit these up quick. This is a little bit more tricky because some corn's still alive and some's not. So you just kind of plant through it all. These ones look like they're gonna survive through it. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna leave these ones be. I think, I think they'll push through. Well, there we go. I am at five acres for the year with the four row. That's, that's quite a bit for a four row, especially for hopping around from field to field to field. <laughs> 